Hey everyone, I want to introduce you to my friend Karen today. Um, she is a newer client. Welcome, Karen. Thank you. Um, Karen and I have worked together since this March of 2024, and we've worked together completely long distance. So I'm in mountain time and she's in central time. And I'm just going to hand over the platform for her to tell her story and what God has done in her health so far. So Karen, let's dive right in. I would love for you to open with introducing yourself. Tell us how old you are, where you're from, and anything else about yourself to get started. Okay, well, first of all, thank you, Dr. Jana, for inviting me to come and share my story. I feel like I'm kind of on a high right now because some great things are happening. And um, my name is Karen. I live in Southwest Missouri. If many of you have heard of the Branson area, I'm about 30 minutes from the Branson area. And so if you're ever going to stop by, I would love to say hi to you. Um, I am 71. I just recently retired from the public schools as a reading teacher. And prior to that, I have been a classroom teacher. I was an early childhood educator. I was a principal. And so education is has always been pretty much my life. It's always been my passion. Uh, it wasn't just a job, it was my passion. And so retirement was a hard decision. And I can share that in my story. But uh, married to a man who is my rock. Uh, we've been married now for 49 years, and we have been blessed with three children, married children with their spouses, and they have blessed our lives with 11 grandchildren from the ages of two all the way up to age 16. Wow. And so it's just, it's that's where I am, and the, the retirement is a whole new chapter that I have started on. Yes. And I remember when I first met you. So our first visit was the end of March of this year and you were still adapting to this world of retirement. Almost. I can relate to this. I've had big like career changes or the Lord's asked me to lay down my practice and move across the country twice now. <laughs> and um, there, there comes uh, some level of sort of identity crisis and just learning who, who this new you is and this new season of life is. And then even when I changed from brick and mortar practice to virtual practice or being a full-time um, doctor to becoming a mother and my priorities um, shifting, it just changes things, doesn't it? it? It does big time because my identity, I realized, I felt like when people always ask us, okay, so what do you do? Mm -hmm. And it was like, well, I'm a teacher. I'm a reading specialist. And I took pride in that. I was I was proud because a lot of people will take a job because it's something to go, well, you know, I, I like doing this. I can make a job. I, I like the job. I can make some money. When I retire, though, I'm going to do this. Well, that was a huge problem for me because when I said I'm going to retire, I didn't know what the plan was. And I wanted a plan. But I knew because of my age, it was time to let someone else have the opportunity to be that teacher. And there was someone already lined up to take my place. But I, for some reason, that was my, that was what I held on to. I held on to that job as my identity, not knowing sure what was going to look like. And so due to that, I went back. And I started following Revelation Wellness and got introduced to Dr. Jana through Revelation Wellness. But I became, decided to do instructor training. But yeah, that's it. I am going to go out. I am going to be that, that instructor. And we're going to do aerobics. We're going to do all kinds of stuff. <laughs> and uh, it, it, that changed because as I struggled with the whole idea of retiring, because it was major to me, it started creating some major health issues for myself that I did not realize. Um, we're told you can have faith or you can have control. And I think I had more, I wanted the control. I want to know what's next. What's next? What's next? This is who I am. I'm, I'm a Nana. Yeah, that's great. <clears throat> I love my grandchildren. I love my kids. We're a very close family, but 
What is out? What what's beyond that? What what am I going to do? And it's been a journey. <laughs> so I mean, so often, like that's that's where we find our identity or our purpose. And when a long season of especially when we know that we're like serving the Lord in it, we're doing it, it's a calling, it's built into us, it's who God created us to be. And I I also want to say thank you in a way for your service <laughs> because <laughs> being a teacher in these modern generations is not easy. And I feel like it's, it's in a way, like a thank you, like a, to a veteran, thank you for serving in the school system, because that is not an easy job. It's underpaid and underappreciated. So God bless you. We need more, um, strong, uh, Christian women and men that are using that as their mission field. And you served well, I've gotten to know you quite well, and we have such a sweet relationship, even in these few short months. And I just love you, and I am so grateful for what you did. But I, I can relate. I know it is hard when you go through those seasons, but they're so sanctifying, and we do realize that our identity is in Christ alone, and He does have a plan, and He's not done with you. But I see Him giving you a season of rest to rebuild and focus on some things that you didn't have the time to focus on. Right. And you started having these health issues that were surfacing and I didn't remember how we connected or how you got referred to me. Um, but it sounds like it was through the Avenue of revelation wellness, which is awesome. A longstanding relationship with that ministry. And it's been an honor. So would you share, I don't know if there's any other relevant details in that part of the story, but I would love for you to segue into sharing as much as you're comfortable with what, what you are suffering. Cause I know there was sepsis and chronic UTIs and more. So would you share what your history was and what you were coming in with um, when we started and what the journey was like in your own words? Okay. It's that it really started hitting probably about three years ago, exactly three years ago in my teaching, I was trying to decide, you know, is it, is it time to retire? And I was struggling with it, even in my quiet morning, quiet time. I just could not get a piece about it. And I am a person, I don't like to sit still. In fact, it's very rare that either as I'm talking to you, I usually have my legs crossed and my foot is swinging back and forth. Because I just, I just, I just think, well, I can get some more steps in if I just keep swinging my feet back and forth. And I have learned that being still in the Lord to really hear, you have to be still. I am one that even to do like a whole exercise workout and say, okay, now it's time to relax and breathe. Now, I don't have time for that. I was off. I mean, it's like that really, this is not what I need. I did my workout. I'm, re I'm ready to go. And so three years ago in April, I was walking down the hallway and a student who was pretty upset rounded the corner. And mind you, this, I taught in an elementary school. So this was a third grade student who was very angry. She rounded the corner just as I was coming around and it was like a full body slam. And I went back and landed on my right hand which as a reading teacher, I'm a right-handed person. But I landed on that, shattering my wrist and breaking both bones in my arm. And I remember, as because I hit my head, and I remember laying, and the first thoughts were, Lord, this is not funny. And I was like, no, this cannot be happening. I've never broken a bone. What is going on? So without all the major details, I'm going to fast forward now to three years to which would be now. However, see, I got to think. Yeah, it was three, three years ago. But during that time, due to the injuries on my hand, I have had a total of four surgeries on it mm -hmm. just because of all the complications within that hand to get it back to where I could physically hold a pencil and start writing again without having to support it. So it, that alone was journey. But then I compound that on top of the hand journey, knowing in 20, the school year of 22, 23, that that should probably be my last year. But it kept going back in, in my mind. No, you wanna be sure all the hand stuff is done before you retire. 
And then in December of 2022, I was told you're going to have to have another surgery to get full range of that hand, which meant June 30th of 2023, I was scheduled for surgery for my hand. And I'm going, I don't know if I should retire. Maybe I should put in one more year. Well, during from December, I came down with bronchitis. I came down with shingles. I came down with sepsis in May, spent five days in the hospital with sepsis. And during that time, I will never forget that hospital stay in with my sepsis. I told my husband, he says, what do you need? I said, just bring my Bible. I, that's all I want. Just bring my Bible. And I even hate to admit this, but during those five days of laying that hospital, I never picked up the Bible. I never watched TV. I stared at a ceiling going, I don't get it. But in that moment, God was working. And he simply said, I am not done with you. But you need to listen to me. You need to let go of the control over your life. And you need to let me. And that sepsis bout was a huge breakthrough for me. Isn't it crazy though that the one of the, the most traumatic um, events in our life that seem like they're the most destructive or they're the very thing that's going to take us down is actually the very thing that gives us the greatest spiritual gifts and builds the best, deepest, real, enduring strength. And we sometimes get the greatest revelation or the things that we've been praying for or the things we need that we don't know we need or that we don't actually realize we're praying for. But sometimes these are the, these things, these eternal gifts can come no other way except in the suffering or the breaking in the sanctifying. And oftentimes God does have to really break us down to build us back up for his glory and to make us shine brighter and to breed humility, right? I mean, these seasons yes. are humbling, are they not? They are very humbling. And I think that was the whole thing. I already, I would, I would tell people, you know, who are going through a rough time, you know, let the Lord take it. He can lead you. He can guide you. But when you start walking through it personally, then you're going, what I am telling everybody else, I need to apply and live and see the reality of how God can work through those situations. It's like you, you read the scripture, you know those scriptures. The only thing I remember in that hospital was I would repeat over and over the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And then it comes across, he maketh me lay down in green pastures. Yeah. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. And I ended up just clinging to that book in Psalms. The whole Psalms is amazing. But chapter 23, David's prayer of the Lord is my shepherd became close and dear to my heart that even to this day, when I kind of, if I have to go somewhere, I start really getting nervous, you know, just, just for anything. I start repeating the Lord's prayer in my mind just to calm me. And once I get into that, it's like the Lord says, I'm right here. And another thing I've learned to do, which it's a, I, I'm a very visual person. I like to see, I literally will pull up a chair beside me at my, in my morning quiet time here at my kitchen table. And I'll simply say, Lord, come sit with me. Just sit right here. Be close to me. And every now and then I pat the chair like you're right here. Mm -hmm. And you were with me. But I, that for me, that I don't know. It, it seems to help. It's just like I, I just pull that chair over and um, I lead a women's Bible study. And because we pray for our schools once a week. And one day I told them about that. And so we have a chair that Jesus sits on every day uh, that on Thursdays that Jesus comes and sits down beside us. Yes. And one day one lady sat down and I said, uh, you're sitting on Jesus. I'm sure his lap is <laughs> you need to move because that's Jesus. chair." <laughs> but it, it is just a visual and it helps me stay focused. 
it yeah. helps me stay focused. But through that hard time, I realized the importance and the value of how to be still and just sit. And I'm an early morning person. So that has to happen for me first thing in the morning when I like to get out. And on days that you can get out and be outside, I like to do my morning walk that the earth is just waking up. You hear the birds start yes. chirping. Yes. And I just, I start first praising him, just all the different names going through the alphabet. I think that's a teacher in me going through the alphabet, A, B, C, you know, names for the father, Abba father, you know, he, he is bold. He's beloved. He's a counselor. And I just go through the, I get my mind focused and then I just take the time. I need to listen. I need to listen for the sounds of his small voice. And sometimes the thoughts that he brings I know is from the Lord. Yeah. And you know what I'm reminded of listening to your story and, and having gone through these long, enduring, hard seasons is, you know, we often, it's really easy to preach and recite scripture and encourage somebody else mm -hmm. when we have our health and we're, who isn't praying if they're struggling in some way for the the good stuff. We're praying for the health. We're praying for the ability. We're praying for our energy to come back or our hormones to balance or whatever those specific requests and needs are. But God is so present. And when we're desperate for him and we're in the depths of despair, or we actually get knocked down and we're forced to be yes. still, there's so much blessing in those seasons and that's why I love to bring people on and use this platform for these kind of stories. I have no desire to share, um, nor would I think it's edifying to interview someone who's, you know, puffed up in pride and has perfect health and the perfect body and the perfect, all these things. It was really easy for me to share the gospel before 2018 and going through the hardest years of my life, my Christian life, I guess you'd say. And, um, but I, I'm on being on the other side of it or having whatever ability God has restored to me and giving me this deep inner strength and emotional fortitude and spiritual maturity that um, I, it wouldn't have come through the seasons when it was easy to yeah. share the promises of God, when it was easy to, you know, recite Psalm 23, but not have to live and hold fast. I've been through my Psalm 23 seasons as well. I've been through my, um, you know, waiting on the Lord and rising up with, you know, we, mm -hmm. um, and having to sit under the, the shadow of the almighty and cling to him as my strong tower seasons. Um, until you've actually been so desperate for the Lord, you, you really aren't desperate for the Lord. Right. Um, exactly. So what a blessing that is because he really is answering prayers and uh, there's just so much more eternal value when you get literally knocked down by an eight-year-old or whatever it was, your wrist, your hand that you use for this calling that you've had for all these decades. And um, you, all, you don't know what level of ability or life or strength you're going to get back. And it's only glory to God, the father and our great physician, whatever he chooses to restore to you. Right. You're and I so like grateful it. for, you're so grateful for every bit of ability you have. You don't take it for granted anymore. No. And I think too, I am learning through this journey that sometimes when you get knocked down like that, and there's still things that are still not going to stand on. But when you when you have these seasons of our lives that they're just hard, I am realizing that healing in the mindset for me was always like a physical healing or uh -huh. heal us with our finances, heal us with this. But there is so much inside healing that I don't, I think maybe I haven't thought of the depth of that. But there is spiritual healing, there is relationship healing, there is physical healing, there is like, you know, when you have the Lord, even if you don't, I think there's a lot like financial, like, well, we'll be able to have this, I want to have this, I want to provide this. But when he says my grace is sufficient, right? 
I am learning to hang on to that. He doesn't say it might be depending on you know the circumstance. My grace is sufficient for you. And I just, I cling to that in the shelter of the wings of the almighty God. His grace is sufficient. And my men, my, even my thoughts are, yes, it's not about stuff. It's not about whatever healing he needs to do in my life. If it is to the glory of his name, May I be that vessel then that is used to be able to proclaim the goodness and the mercy of God. Plus, when we're going through those seasons, people tend to listen because they're going, I've been there. That's right. I know. So that, I know. Lip service. It, that's right. Because that's exactly what it, what the Lord convicted me of. It was really easy. And I was so humbled when I was super fit and I was teaching Christian fitness and I had this indoor cycling ministry and I, I literally got to read the word and worship and lead people, but I looked good and I felt good. And I had, you know, I looked the part and I did not think that in an instant, everything could change through something millions and millions of women do every single day and have a baby. <laughs> I never thought the beginning of life in motherhood would be the start of my life kind of crashing down and crumbling, but then the start of really a, a new and better life and a deep, a deep spiritual maturity. So I wasn't of course looking for that, but it changed my life. And it's, you know, we all have different circumstances that got us to that point, but I'm reminded of this. I just shared this on social media this week. I have to read it in Proverbs 18, 14, the spirit of a man, so not our body, not our physical strength, not our health, but the spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness, but who can bear a broken spirit? And this spiritual strength that God is building, like I see such a faithful woman in you and a woman who has yielded and who has submitted and who has bent her knee to have the greater things of the Lord through this injury and sickness and everything that ensued. Cause you didn't just break your wrist. It led to surgeries that destroyed your gut and destroyed your immune system and the stress and the identity crisis through retirement and all that came with this season and more than I could ever even understand, I'm sure. But all of that really took you down, but you get to see God's grace and redeeming power and strength and glory manifested through the trial amen amen and you too we have to be open to that yes we have a choice because a lot of people will choose bitterness yes or choose anger at god will turn away from him in the suffering or the loss or the hurt or heartache or whatever when this is the time to press in and is it not? I'm sure you can testify to this. Here I am. Now, see, I get all fired up. We start talking about the Lord. But when we, when it is so important to know the word before the trial comes, because even though you didn't open your word in those five days in the hospital, it was written on your heart, but you had a deep relationship with the Lord before that, that sustained you, the spirit of Karen, sustained yes. her in sickness because in who can bear a broken spirit, your spirit was not crushed. Your body was crushed. Your wrist was crushed. Your heart was broken. There was a lot going on, but your spirit, the word of God, the Holy spirit, your savior, Jesus Christ sustained you on your sick bed. And now you're coming out stronger, yes. even though you're aging and 71 years old now. Yes. And I think too, that is another thing that we have to be aware, aware of that during that time when I didn't even know how to pray, I could not even pray. I literally just stared. I, I look back on that and I go, I don't even know where the time went. They'd bring dinner in and stuff. They'd say, you need to eat. And I go, why? I, I don't want to eat. I don't want to eat. That's where you're that that community of praying warrior friends yes. is huge 
to sustain us. And even scripture says, there are times when you may not even know how to pray and he intercedes. And right. that's why as believers, we must tap into those that we know are prayer warriors that are interceding for us at that time right. because you get so low. It's just like, I, I honestly, I felt numb during that time. Yeah. It's just, I didn't feel anything and I, I didn't get it. I didn't. And two, being a prideful person, I wouldn't get to admit that to anybody. I hear you. you see, we always have it together. I'm the one that's, oh, you know, it's going to be okay. And people say, how are you doing? Oh, you know, it's going to be okay. But inside, I felt like a thousand piece puzzle that couldn't begin to find two pieces to go to together. And there were times I didn't care. Yeah. Because it was like, is this what it's going to be? Yeah. But God. But God. Oh, so God. <laughs> no. So let's use that as our segue to take us to the current and last three months or so, whatever it's okay. been. And so all of that is what brought you ultimately um, to us meeting. Yes. And it, it sounds like it was through Revelation Wellness that you heard about my practice and that's what led you to make an appointment. So in your own words, what was the beginning of the journey like? And when you, when we met or the initial consultation and, and just share it, whatever, whatever was real okay. to you and whatever um, shocking or encouraging I, to you. <laughs> I was definitely sold on the work of the ministry of revelation wellness. And you had presented a podcast about just getting healthy. And I, I listened to that. And at the end, you said, there's going to be a discount. I'm always about discounts. <laughs> if you are interested or just get a, a consultation. And I thought, you know what? That's not going to hurt. Because honestly, I, at that point, I decided to retire. But I was feeling just, I felt stuck. I felt like I don't know what I'm going to do. I feel like my body, it's falling apart. I don't know. I was, doctor had told me, my surgeon had told me, please do not go running because if you start, if you trip, you cannot, you've got to protect that hand. So the whole, and lifting weights, I had established prior to all that, lifting weights. And again, I felt pretty good about where I was in my journey. Mm -hmm. Years ago, my daughter got me, our family started on being more organic with our eating. I felt like we were being fairly healthy. But inside, I just, I never wanted to be the Nana that would be, smell funny, become fluffy, and would sit around and not do anything. And after that sepsis, I feel like that's exactly what I am. I didn't think I smelled funny, but I feel like I'm getting fluffy and I'm not, they come and it's like the energy I'm going, yeah, I'll do something. But inside, it was like, I don't have that excitement about something is wrong inside. So I reached out to you and we, we started the journey and I felt very led on the first consult. Yes, this is something I want to do. I want more one-on-one -on -one time. I want to truly find out because, and the chronic UTIs have been a big factor for me and the antibody just does not work. I was pretty much on a regiment prior to meeting with you that that regiment considered, it was probably every six to eight weeks, I was back on an antibiotic to take care of. And I never felt like I was totally getting rid of it. In fact, I even told my husband, I don't think I, I start feeling better, but I am never totally rid of it. And I thought if I can get a hold and Dr. Jenna has some wise information that she can share that the Lord is providing her as that tool. I need to invest my time and just everything involved in that piece, the money and everything I'm going to invest because if this vessel needs to get back to the original design that God intended it to be, we got some work to do. So I met with you and I'll be honest with you. When you said, well, we're going to do these labs. I'm going, okay, fine. Well, then when I 
package in the mail. I get this stuff order. I'm going, oh, well, let's see. This means I got to go somewhere and get blood work done. I need to send, sorry, people, but you get, need to send in your bodily functions into her. You know, uh, <laughs> you need to send a stool sample in. You said, I'm going, this is just disgusting to me. But I knew, and I kept thinking, okay, I'm, okay, I said I was going to do this. I'm going to do this. So let me back up, let me, ba let me back up a second okay. before we get into what we did to get you better. Um, okay. Just so that be only because people don't know all of your history. So they know okay. this, this trial that you went through for these three years, but when you came in, what all were you struggling with? So chronic UTIs that you were getting an antibiotic for every six to eight weeks, I think, mm -hmm. or whatever, right? You had, um, so I'm, I just pulled up your notes just to like, yeah. okay. recap. so I don't know if you want me to share. If you no, that's okay. That. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I had documented that um, you had a lot of gut health issues, these chronic UTIs, the antibiotics were not resolving allergies, um, weight gain, you couldn't lose like five to 10 pounds. And it was just really uncomfortable on your body. You're a small framed woman. Um, you had sepsis the year before. Um, and you were just feeling really uh, frustrated. And um, you had nickel and food allergies. Um, did you have lupus? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Shingles the year before, which you already mentioned earlier. So clearly your immune system was just flipping out at this point. And something else I want to point out that most people don't even think about coming in. But when I hear you tell your story and I'm looking at your history, because would you not agree? I ask in a, a, a long list of personal questions, probably more detailed than most intake forms ever will, because all this stuff matters. But knowing that what you had been through in the last few years and the broken wrist, which led to four surgeries. I hear in multiple antibiotics, just from that alone, multiple anesthesia, um, or bouts of anesthesia, pain pills, all of these poisons and chemicals and heavy metals, and maybe even a uh, contrast fluid from imaging studies to look at the wrist and all the bones and all that comes with that, the radiation. So I know just in the last three years, regardless of whatever happened in your life before that, that you've been nearly poisoned to death just as a result of the injury, which then completely wipes out your gut and your microbiome and your immune system. So I already know that that alone would be cause for uh, an overload of toxins and infections in the body, in addition to all of your past history. So, okay. Yeah, and basically I just was not feeling good. Yeah. I over, and I am a comparison person. I've done it all my life. I will see people. And if I see someone and I'm going, oh, I need to probably lose this. So I look more like them. I compare all the time. And I have done that for years. Why? I don't know. That is just, I always wanted, and again, it's a humbleness that you learn that God created each of us to be us. We are specific design yes. and, but I wasn't pleased with what was happening to my design because I honestly believed that there was something I could do to at least be healthy, that there was a lot of weight of just stuff I needed to get rid of, not just according to the scale, but up here and probably in here yeah. that said, there's a lot and it just kept coming back to be still in the Lord. Yeah. There are people out there who can help you. You are not alone. Do not feel like here I am. I'm just a hot mess yeah. and good luck figuring it out. Yeah. But there, there are resources out there. And if this has been brought to my attention Maybe that's the Lord. I'm starting to learn about little nudges. When I keep getting something on my mind and it won't go away and it's something I've been praying about, then to me, it's like, it's time to move. It's like the Red Sea. You know, they they could not have parted the Red Sea if they would have stuck their toe in the water. Yeah. And that's why I've always said, you got to put, sometimes you have to just go, okay, I'm doing this. I'm walking by faith. Yeah. And I'm going to go through this. So I came and then the journey started and praise God in just this short time. However, when I heard, 
Okay, well, let's, after that, you get the labs and you say, I think we need to do this. I'm looking at, oh my goodness, look at all this stuff Yes, I need to be taking. So, well, and that's what I, uh, I, that was one of the things I remembered was, so there was a lot, I, I mean, I heard you saying like, you give me your history and then you had these even autoimmune diagnoses like lupus and mm -hmm. you came in on high blood pressure medication too, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. I remember, right? yes. Um, but your energy was tanking to where it was affecting your ability to take care of your grandkids or even drive in the afternoons. Right. Yeah. Um, bowel think... movements weren't right. There was all this gut stuff and sleep wasn't great right? That is correct. Right? Okay. And then also one big thing only because there's the, there's the, the testimony coming. Um, you were swelling to the point where your doctor was telling you, you needed to live wearing compression socks all the time. Correct. That is correct. Right? Yeah. My so there was, a, there was all this stuff going on and, and a lot of people would just chalk this up to going, I'm in my seventies. This is the way it is. This is just getting old and that you just have to live with this or, you just have to take medications or you just have to accept it. But what was different? Of course, you, uh, you know how I spoke to you <laughs> and I'm going to be like, absolutely not. Yes, we are aging. We're very realistic, but it does not. You do not have to suffer just because you're aging and your quality of life does not have to be horrible just because you're aging. These are real symptoms and evidence that something is wrong and messed up. So I guess my question to you would be when we were in that first 90 minutes together and we talked about so much and you shared your story and you shared your history and I asked you questions, were you, uh, and then we, I told you about la functional lab testing and I told you about how we could actually get answers about what was really going on. What were your thoughts? Were you shocked? Were you hopeful? Were you uh, had you ever heard of this before? Like what, what was it like on your end of it? Because you ended up moving forward and then we're about to share all the goodies. I think what really happened, I think I, I honestly felt there was a hope. I, you know, I, I felt like, okay, there's an answer, but this, I've got to stick to a program. I can't jump from here. I can't jump to there, but there is an answer here because I, I had prayed about it. Is this something that I need to pursue? And to go that direction just kept getting little nudges. Like you need to find, there's something more. And I've never been one that likes to take medication. In fact, again, a pride thing. I've always kind of prided. Well, I'm not on a lot of prescriptions. You know, I've got my high blood, my blood pressure, and that's about it. But it was just like, okay, I don't want to be, I want to be in better health now than I was before I retired. I don't, I want to really enjoy this body the way God intends it to be. Yes, it, scripture said it's going to get old. It's going to break down. But if in my head and in my heart, I know I am doing what God wants this body to be fed, what it not only through nutrition, but through his word, that I can't ask for anything greater mm -hmm. and how it will all work is in it's in his hands. Yeah. But if mentally I can get on top, I think that was a huge one. It's like, so, okay, I, I feel like there is hope, but too, because we're an instantaneous society, I wanted it fast. Yes. The you and everybody time. else. <laughs> yeah. And that's not how it works. No. It, no. Nope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. So we do, so we have your first visit. Um, I, I make lab recommendations based on what you were going through. You decided to move forward and in hindsight, you can, I'm sure say, I'll let you say it, but made a very wise decision based on how you're doing today already, just less what March, April, May, June, less than three months later. But okay, so we order the labs, we process labs and we plan your lab review. And then that was where I interrupted you. And you were like, these kits arrived at your house and I wanted samples of your poop and your pee. <laughs> and you were like, this is disgusting. Okay, so in your own words, you take off from there. So yes, it was disgusting, but I kept... It's like, I mean, I let it sit there and thought, nope, you can't, you, you, no, you have invested in this. This is going to be a game changer. Just go ahead and go through it. It was not that bad. I I got the labs in and then I couldn't wait to hear back from you to determine what did you find through those labs? 
What do we need to do? And we had our consult and I'm going, wow, there's just a lot because your labs are in so much more detail. They really get down to what the basic problem is. And deep down, I knew that's what I wanted to hear. Yeah. What is the problem and what are the steps? So what, do? yeah, what was it when we went through, I can't remember all of what we found. You probably, re or actually I have some of the summary right here in front of me. Oh, we had crazy amounts of mold poisoning. I'm sure, I think I remember that was a total shock to you. That was not even kind of on your radar, right? Well, yes. And then, cause you asked me the question, where have you been around a lot of mold? And my first response was I taught in a mobile unit in our building in an old mobile unit. And I do know that there was mold in that building that probably needed to be addressed. And now they're actually removing that mobile from the campus, but I was in there for several years. And, and then growing up on the farm, you know, uh, the pesticides that were used, even though down the road, my dad got away from it because my mom was adamant, we don't need that. And just the, all of those basic things that had probably that you shared with me had been building for years yeah. were now really starting to take its toll. Yeah. And so we can go, uh, sometimes we can go years or decades, um, asymptomatic or not so symptomatic that we feel the need to go do something about it. And then you have this trauma trial injury in life where then you get bombarded with a bunch of toxins and, and things through all the drugs and surgery and whatnot. Um, and so by then, but then your body was at a breaking point of going, I have to get help. I have to do something about it. So were you were you shocked or were you like, oh, I'm not surprised? Like, what did you think about what showed up in your labs? What was it? In some ways, some of it was like, wow, that is a lot. But as you would go through it and describe it, and I really took time to reflect and think about it, I thought it all makes sense. Mm -hmm. It makes sense what has happened. And this wasn't an overnight thing. It's been years and it is accumulated. And so now I got to put the past in the past. I'm starting today. Yes. So what do I need to do today? And I started the journey in the first month. It was like when we talked about, it, you said, I want you to get rid of the sugars. I want you to watch the gluten because what you're I thought, oh my gosh, this is going to be hard. But I was at that high that said, nope, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to move forward, yeah. which I did. And when, uh, so I, part of the reason I asked you, invited you on to um, share your story today was because we had our appointment this morning and I was like, you have to come on my podcast. You have to tell your story. This is awesome. This is so exciting because our last follow-up, you were a little less encouraged. You were like, not at, you know, not as excited because you were still in the thick of detox. So how long, I don't remember, you would know, how long was it from when you started everything like you started changing your diet and then you added the the custom supplements and stuff like that to where you got breakthrough and then explain where you're at today like what all has changed because okay you just got breakthrough like a week ago I right? got the lab review on April 29th I actually wrote these dates down okay so we got the plan and then on May 28th I was told that just a month ago I thought okay now she's probably gonna let me add sugar back in you know like some you know and you gently said, no, let's stay off of it. And I'm going, really? <laughs> but, okay. And I remember my husband came home and said, I still can't have sugar. And I was like, ah. but I stayed with it. And last, this past Friday, just it hasn't been a week, just like today's what, the 25th. So we're talking about the 22nd, something like that with, uh -huh. with this past Friday. I woke up and I came out and I thought in the morning to my morning devotion, I thought, you know what? I am feeling better. And the whole day I kept thinking, I am starting to see a difference. And I really started to get excited about it. And I thought if I would have given up when I wanted to give up, which prior to any other thing I do, if I start feeling I'm not getting results, I will quit. 
but to push through, to just keep plowing through. You know this is going to take it. This did not happen overnight, Karen. I had to do some self-talking. This did not happen overnight. And you're going to quit at six weeks and say, I'm done. No, you keep plowing through. Yeah. And it came. And the shocking thing was uh, you shared how you get to have your, your poop an analyzed. Mm -hmm. And I was shocked when I started passing things I didn't think were within my body. And I'm going, oh my goodness, this is what detox is. It yes. detox doesn't happen overnight. It comes through a series of staying constant and being true to this body, using what has been shared with you from a biblical standpoint and staying the course. Just keep your eyes on the end result. And the end result for me is not... If I'm going to fit in smaller jeans, it's not, I'm not going to compare, but it, the end result is I want this vessel to be strong in the Lord so I can serve. And I'm starting to see that breakthrough and the importance of staying the course every day in lamentations. His mercies are new every morning. Right. Put the past in the past. Keep plugging away because at some point, like we shared today, whether it's two months five months, six months, a year. Keep the course because God has something big in store. Amen. And I can't wait to see where the next step is going to take. But it's because he led me yep. and I had an accountability person in you to go ahead and say, stay the course. Yes, We have work to do. Keep on the course. Yes. And I just want to bring up like that some of the things so that you shared today. Um, and again, it's, it, it's not even five and six months in it's, what'd you say it is six or seven weeks or something? It's like, yeah, it's like the two months. It's uh, two months. May, April 29th is when I actually started the whole regimen. And this yeah. is like you. Like so like months. seven, yeah. So seven weeks in or whatever, you're having all this breakthrough. So the things that you shared with me today were, you're not falling asleep at the wheel anymore. You're keeping up with your grandkids where just a couple of months ago, you felt like you thought something was severely damaged in your heart. You would get short of breath or dizzy, or you just couldn't even keep up or play with them like you used to, or like you would want to. You aren't wearing compression socks anymore. All that swelling is going away. You passed worms, right? Is that too yeah. much to say? <laughs> yeah, well, you said it, Janet, it's out there. <laughs> but yes, that's true. <laughs> But you were shocked because one of the things that was so uh, significant to me is we tested as comprehensive as is available on you with a stool test. So we tested over 300 biomarkers just in your stool test alone. And then we did your urine test over hundred biomarkers there. And we did not pick up any evidence of parasites, but the reality is, is par most people have parasites and all this other stuff, you know, any combination of these other things, but they can hide in biofilms and they can hide within us and wreak havoc on us. And so even if we don't see identification of a species or lab evidence through um, other markers, the reality is now we know through physical evidence and what's coming out of your body and, and quickly, it took me 11 months to start passing worms with strategic detox after running even more comprehensive labs on myself than I did on you. Um, my body, they were that, which tells me these things are probably so chronic from childhood decades old before my drainage pathways opened up enough and biofilms were like unraveled enough to release them into my system to where they could actually die and get out. All that to say that has led to breakthroughs in energy, immunity, gut health, right? You've lost the five to 10 pounds or whatever already. Your swelling is down. I have no doubt you'll probably be able to get off of high blood pressure medication and all these other things like the good, we're not even there yet, but it's so exciting. And I think one of the biggest things is that quality of life. When you can be an encourager and a, and a solid helpmate to your husband and not a sick person in the household, when you can take care of your grandkids, take on, you know, requests to babysit and 
spend the day with them without feeling scared to drive them around or falling asleep mid afternoon. I mean, those are, those are huge things to get back. And that is the grace of God and his mercies are new every day. And his grace is sufficient to sustain you, to do the hard thing, to do the uncomfortable things, to give up the things you don't want to give up, right? right. To not partake, um, a life-changing scripture for me that anybody who knows me will hear me repeat over and over, but first Corinthians six twelve, everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. In your case right now, like grains and sugar are not beneficial. Are they permissible according to the Bible? Yeah. But are they beneficial according to your immune system and your labs and your health? No, ma'am, not right now, but we're trying to fast and then use a have a very customized detox plan to get the stuff out of your body that's been keeping you sick for years so that your body can heal and calm down and restore so that you can tolerate your environment and food and all of that once again without reacting so that you can have more food freedom in the future and have a better quality of life so that you can have better quality of life no matter how many years the Lord gives you or not, you can enjoy right. those years and be fruitful for the kingdom and, and do the things that matter. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. It's so yeah. good to see yeah. it. Just yeah. like, Oh, it fuels my soul. It's so exciting to see yeah. people get their life back. Yeah. Uh, there's a, it's a journey. Every day is a new day. Mm -hmm. And I am learning. You just take it a day at a time because we don't know the, just that, what life is going to throw at us. But when he is definitely to get that core strong in the Lord, he's going to give the core strong if we're taking care of it to be that vessel he intends us to be. And yeah. man, it is my prayer that I continue to just whatever comes that my first focus is God first. And through him being first, he will take sometimes that temptation to want to go and, you know, maybe grab some sugar or maybe do something that is not healthy, but he is my go-to yeah. instead of grabbing something unhealthy. He is my go-to. Amen. And you know what? Even if you did do that, his mercies are still new every day. They're not yes. new every day when you're perfect. They're not new every day just because you're a mess. They're new every day because it's a promise and God said it in his word and they're new every day, no matter what. what. Yeah. And number one. And number two, um, I don't know if you want to share much, but this has also equipped you for an unforeseen diagnosis in your husband that has changed the course of your life. And I can relate. We, so we've been paralleling this journey together. Um, I mean, can you imagine being sick and knocked down at the same time as what this right. next chapter is um, proving yes. to bring? It's a new chapter on May 13th. He was diagnosed with stage four prostate cancer, uh, totally blindsiding both of us. And uh, he's never been sick a day in his life, really. He is healthy. He continues to work. He he's he and I are the same age. We're both seventy one. He continues to do construction. He never had any symptoms. He never had any idea that anything was wrong. It was found through um, his annual checkup and through the PSA levels that they had jumped up. Just to, had jumped up, and they said we need to check it out. And when we got the report, we were floored. And so now we're looking at starting a journey that we never dreamed that he is on, that together, that the eating healthier yeah. is definitely a goal because the word cancer scares everybody. And all cancer is, we all have cancer cells within us, mm -hmm. but our good cells for some reason aren't feeding into fighting what needs to be fought in our bodies. And the cancer is starting to take over. And so we are doing what we can. I, again, you pray for wisdom. You pray for resources that are God-given, how to walk this journey and feed the good cells along with the Lord's power and his might through the physicians we have. 
And we, we take, again, we take it a day at a time, praying each day for just strength for the day, wisdom, and then to have direction and the courage that whatever it takes that we are in it, but knowing that I'm starting to feel so much better to know that it's just made, the Lord hems us in. He has, pre, he puts a hedge around us that whatever the circumstances that are, he still says, I'm walking with you. I walk before you. He knew this was going to happen before we ever had even a idea, but he knew. And in all of this, it's just more to our story and yeah. how the Lord orchestrates everything together. And bottom line, that when that day comes, that my goal is that when I meet him face to face, whenever that is, that he'll simply say, well done, my faith servant and child and so right now I feel my job is to be a servant to my husband to be a servant in any way that he sees fit I even made a comment to him the other day I said oh, maybe I can start a bible study when we're living up in Kansas City for all these treatments with some other ladies that are are going through the same thing and he just, he just kind of goes uh well we'll see well we'll <laughs> see but the Lord the through this whole journey we got to be still in his presence to listen, and then we have to move. We're still, and when the doors open, we have to move. And then we make that commitment to move. Stay the course. He's not going to leave it. That's He's right. That's right. Be still, and then obey, and endure. And endure. Yes. And trust the Lord through it all. Like Because yes. we are not in control, and the more we try to hold on to control, he will, in his loving kindness and his grace and his relentless love for us, he will often break us as a good father to rebuild us for our good and his glory. I mean, I, I feel like that's just, that's what this little ministry that I'm in every day is what I'm walking through with people constantly, different yeah. circumstances, different ages, different, you know, walks of life, callings, whatever, but the same story is, that God desires us to be sanctified and more like him and be a good witness to the world. And so he knows whether it's that miraculous healing or the enduring journey or even the suffering that will bring him the most glory. And so we can trust him through all of it. Amen. Yeah. yeah. And just watch him work. Yep. And there's, there's ups and downs. There's goods and there's bad because that is life. That's but right. But overall, I serve a God greater in all of these situations that come, I serve a God greater. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he is my rock and he is my go-to. And so I must walk by faith and not by sight, lose the control and walk definitely in faith each day and each step of the way. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And this world is not our home. And at the end of the day, even if even if the unthinkable, even if the hardest, even if we don't get what we want, we're going to a world where there's no more pain, no more suffering. We don't have to live in these bodies anymore. And so the better we can represent Christ on this earth and take people along with us, uh, pointing them to Christ if they don't know him or spurring them on to a more uh, rich and mature relationship with him, it's all worth it. It is. Amen. It is. He paid it all and we're just his best <laughs> and we've got to do the best we can with it. Amen. Well, thank you, Karen, for um, just sharing your story, being real. You know, it's not easy to share uh, how <laughs> we're being stripped of pride and, <laughs> and all these things. It's hard. I've had, you know, it, it's very humbling. And um, so I just appreciate you. I am sure that it's going to touch someone's heart. I always hear um, back after these podcasts. So may God richly bless you and your husband. And I know I'll be in touch with you regularly, but I will continue to pray for your husband as well. And I thank you for your prayers for my husband in our journey thank as well. You. Thank you. Yes.